Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of May. Quad leaders vow to stand together for free and open Indo-Pacific with eyes on China. Pakistan government to stop opposition PTI's long march, says Interior Minister Imran Khan rejects ban. And Sri Lanka increases fuel prices to address economic crisis, encourages people to work from home. And now for all the details. The leaders of the Quad grouping, including the US, India, Australia and Japan on Tuesday, agreed to boost cooperation and fight climate change during a summit in Tokyo with an eye on increasingly assertive China in the Indo-Pacific region. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his remarks said that Quad's mutual cooperation is achieving a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region during a meeting of the Quad group of countries including the US, India, Australia and Japan in Tokyo on Tuesday. Modi told the Quad leaders how their four nations have joined forces to combat the deadly coronavirus pandemic and called for increased economic cooperation. The summit took place at a time when relations between China and Quad member countries have become tense in the last few years with Beijing increasingly resorting to coercive trade practices. Apart from boosting cooperation and joining hands to develop infrastructure in the Indo-Pacific region, the grouping also vowed to work together to fight climate change. All the leaders also voiced concerns over the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida later told a news conference. ओपन और इंक्लूसिव इंडो पैसिफिक क्षेत्र को प्रोत्साहन मिल रहा है। Earlier in the day, the four leaders announced the opening of applications for the Quad Fellowship Program that will open the doors for hundred students in their countries to pursue studies in the U.S. in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Before concluding his two-day visit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also held separate bilateral meetings with Joe Biden and his Japanese counterpart Kishida and Australia's Anthony Albanese to further strengthen cooperation in trade, investment, technology and defence. Flash floods and landslides in India's northeast Assam state killed at least 25 people and displaced over 650,000 from their homes in the past 10 days, officials said on Tuesday. Authorities have set up 366 relief camps across 20 districts, providing temporary shelter for more than 95,000 people. Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma on Tuesday visited the flood-affected areas to take stock of the prevailing situation in Haflong and Dima Hasao and assured them of remedial measures. Flash floods and landslides in India's northeast Assam state have killed at least 25 people and displaced over 650,000 from their homes in the past 10 days, officials said on Tuesday. The Brahmaputra River burst its banks in the state this month and has inundated 1,800 villages in 26 districts. The floods have also devastated high-yielding summer paddy, leaving hundreds of farmers in a quandary. The farmers used to harvest before the monsoons wreaked havoc in the state in June, but the sudden pre-monsoon floods have come as a bolt from the blue for them. Almost 82,503 hectares of crop Areas have been reportedly damaged across the state. Assam Chief Minister Heman Biswa Sharma on Tuesday visited the flood-affected areas to take stock of the prevailing situation in Haflong and Dima Hassau districts and assured people of rehabilitation. Authorities have also set up 366 relief camps across 20 districts providing temporary shelter for more than 95,000 people. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah on Tuesday announced that the federal cabinet had decided it would not allow ousted former Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI to hold its planned long march to the capital, which is due to take place on May 25. Addressing a press conference in Islamabad, Sanaullah said the government would not allow the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf to spread chaos and disorder in the guise of the march, while blaming that Khan wanted to divide the nation. The federal government, as well as the governments of Sindh and Punjab provinces, have decided to impose a ban on gatherings under Section 144 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Meanwhile, rejecting the ban, Khan said he will lead the biggest procession in Pakistan's history on Wednesday. Addressing a press conference in Peshawar, he instead criticized the ruling PMLN government, saying he has been seeing the Sharif family adopting the same tactics as military dictators since 1985. Khan has called for the march to demand dissolution of assemblies and a date for elections as the South Asian nation continues to slide into political and economic crisis. Moving on. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan have lamented the tourism sector in the region is suffering badly due to poor roads and lack of accommodation for tourists. They have lamented inaction by authorities to bring about development and improve basic infrastructure over the years. The remote Himalayan region of Gilgit Baltistan is blessed with breathtaking beauty as it features stunning valleys and crystal blue lakes which have a potential to make the region an international tourism hub. Locals have however claimed that tourism industry in the illegally occupied region has been witnessing a huge decline due to the government negligence to maintain roads, create provisions for accommodation and other basic infrastructure including transportation and network connectivity. So, the first thing that we have is the road. The road is the road. The road is Tourists who come to this area, they have to face the access to their access. Besides, the tourism department has also been very difficult to stay here. They have to stay here to stay here or stay here. They have to stay here to stay here to stay here. Tourism is the mainstay of the region's economy. Residents blame that Pakistan has been looting natural resources of Gilgit Baltistan for over past seven decades but has deprived them of even their basic rights. They claim the agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka increased fuel prices on Tuesday, a long-flagged move to mend public finances and combat its debilitating economic crisis. But the hikes are bound to add to galloping inflation, at least in the short term. Sri Lanka's Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara said on Tuesday that petrol prices would increase by 20 to 24 percent, while diesel prices would rise by 35 to 38 percent with immediate effect. Daily limits on how much each consumer can purchase will continue. People would be encouraged to work from home to minimize the use of fuel and to manage the energy crisis and that public sector officials would work from their offices only when instructed by the head of their institutions, he added. Sri Lanka is in the throes of its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948 as the dire shortage of foreign exchange has stalled imports and left the country short of fuel and medicines and struggling with rolling power cuts. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe appointed in place of Mahinda Rajapaksa earlier this month after violence broke out when government supporters attacked protesters said last week there is a possibility that inflation will increase further. Meanwhile, amid the economic crisis, U.S. aid administrator Samantha Power called PM Vikramasinghe and assured him that the U.S. Development Agency would closely work with other donors, such as the IMF, the World Bank and G7, to support Sri Lanka during this extraordinarily difficult period. She committed to helping the island nation weather the financial crisis. World Health Organization WHO representative to Sri Lanka Alka Singh on Tuesday called on the Prime Minister and assured him of the organization's full support to overcome the country's medical crisis. Due to a severe shortage of medicines, the country's healthcare system is close to collapse. It imports more than 80% of its medical supplies, but with foreign currency reserves drying up during the crisis, essential drugs are disappearing from shelves. 
In news from Afghanistan, ever since Taliban took control of Afghanistan last year, they have increased restrictions on women's lives, including barring girls from going to school beyond seventh grade. Taliban officials have claimed the ban is temporary, but said the same thing the last time they were in power more than two decades ago. Pupils are longing for stable country with education for girls. Afghanistan's educational year started on March 23, but the Taliban authorities suspended schooling for girls from grade 7 to grade 12 until further notice. 12-year-old girl Hafsa is a fifth grader at a school on the outskirts of capital Kabul. She wishes to see stable Afghanistan, where all including girls could go to school and get education. The ban has been largely freed by Afghans as opposition to girls' education, demanding the reopening of girls' schools for all ages in the country. Although authorities have repeatedly assured that schools for all girls would be reopened, school girls and supporters of the girls' education have called upon the concerned departments to reopen girls' schools as soon as possible. In the impoverished country, many schools have no proper buildings, textbooks, labs or even portable water for students. Women's rights made progress after a US-led invasion toppled the Taliban government in 2001 with women getting jobs and proper education. The Taliban says it has changed since its last rule, but in recent months added regulations limiting women's movement without a male chaperone. Older girls are also yet to be allowed back to schools and colleges. Giving a further push to adventure tourism potential of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, authorities have started paragliding on the outskirts of Srinagar city, which is attracting a large number of tourists and local enthusiasts. Tourism is an important industry for Jammu and Kashmir, contributing about 7% to its economy. With an aim to boost adventure tourism, authorities in India's picturesque Himalayan territory of Jammu and Kashmir have launched paragliding in the outskirts of Srinagar, which is attracting scores of tourists and locals. Covering a vertical drop of about 2,000 feet, the paragliding begins from Astanmarg top to the Chandrapura ground, providing a thrilling experience of a free flight and mesmerizing bird's eye view with the Zabarwan hills in the backdrop. Tourists can book the ride online and have to report at the Havan Garden where dedicated experts brief them about the gear and safety instructions before making the flight. Tourism is an important industry for Jammu and Kashmir, contributing about 7% to its economy, according to government data. Reports suggest tourist arrivals touched a 10-year high this year, with more than 700,000 tourists visiting the region since January to mid to May. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.